Well, Australia's sustainable aviation fuel sector is taking off now with the help of a Jet Zero Council to oversee the sector's decarbonisation. Um, also alluding to, to the news there, you can see on the bottom, the Gold Coast Titans uh, coach and coach Holbrook parting way. So Gold Coast Titans coach is gone. We'll get more news on that when it comes to hand. Uh, in terms of fuel decarbonisation, it has created and paired with a $30 million funding injection to accelerate the production of sustainable fuels. Biomass can play a big role in sustainable aviation fuel. That'll create jobs uh, across regional Australia. It'll create jobs for uh, traditional agricultural industries. Joining me now is Jonathan Flegg, Board Director with Jet Zero. This is a company that's been exploring exactly this pathway. Thanks for your time. So in terms of aviation specifically, does it differ from vehicles? How much can be used in terms of this type of fuel, uh, the percent it can be, and how much does that reduce emissions? Yeah, thanks for having me on the program, Tom. I'm very pleased to be here. So um, you, you, you've asked an interesting question there around uh, specifically uh, what the blend can be. And so sustainable aviation fuel is obviously uh, is the preeminent pre way that the aviation industry is going to decarbonise. Um, there are challenges uh, with electrification and for hydrogen um, in aviation, particularly for long haul flights. And so the, the international uh, aviation industry is moving uh, quite quickly in this direction, obviously with the support of government. Um, SAF is a very safe technology. It's a blend um, with traditional A1 jet fuel. And uh, it is certified up to 50% uh, in terms of blend. Um, and recently Boeing has even uh, trialled and flown uh, major aircraft with 100% SAF blends perfectly comfortably. There have now been over uh, half a million flights around the world since 2008 that have used a SAF blend and, uh, and so it's very safe for use and well understood, well uh, developed technology. Right, so there's no risk around reliability and so on. What's the, what's the hope, what's the best um, or highest market could achieve in terms of reducing emissions on the, the fuel component for flying? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the estimates in relation to, and obviously it's relying on the blend um, in Australia, uh, initial moves towards uh, SAF blends will be much lower than the 50% I mentioned earlier. Uh, but we, we're talking about emissions reductions uh, of about 80% uh, in the aviation sector, if we can get up to those high blend numbers, of course. And uh, we're well on the way to doing that. Yeah, OK. The, you mentioned as well the electrification or the, the hydrogen element and the, the issues with that. What's, what, what are the issues? Is it that they might be able to be used and be safe in shorter flights, but the just size that would be needed for longer flights is beyond us right now? It might be possible one day? Yeah, that's a good question, Tom. And I think you know, your listeners will understand um, aviation is very much a different sector to ground transportation in relation to every element of weight in a, in a plane needs to account for itself. Um, when you're talking about the most state-of-the-art batteries that are looked at uh, in the aviation sector at the moment, um, and even the hydrogen opportunities, you're talking multiple uh, times more energy density is required to, uh, to move uh, a plane in the sky. So, uh, you know, the state-of-the-art batteries that we're looking at at the moment in, in the industry are about seven times more energy dense than SAF and more for, uh, four more times than liquid hydrogen. So obviously a lot, uh, lot more energy uh, density problems associated with those. There is some possibility and opportunity for electrification for smaller aircraft for shorter journeys um, in relation mm. to regional flights. But when we're talking about uh, particularly international long haul travel, uh, SAF is the only known uh, uh, technology that's on the frontier at the moment for long haul travel in aviation. And uh, look, I'm asking this uh, without having any idea, so it might be a silly question. Is there an element of the takeoff in particular that's really intensive that is harder for a battery to do? So maybe you'd have a situation where planes could use a small amount of fuel for that huge takeoff effort and battery for the rest, or is that not really the case? Yeah, uh, the, the, the current um, projections are suggesting that would be uh, challenging. Um, the other thing I should mention, uh, Tom, about uh, SAF and why it is one of the beneficial uh, opportunities is the fact that it's just a straight in plug in fuel, same as E10 um, in your car. Um, the blend mm. means it could be dropped directly into our existing fuel systems with minimal retrofitting or changes to the aircraft. Uh, and in fact, no, no changes for those lower blends.
Yeah, so it's the, the, the quickest way to reduce, even if it doesn't get all the way, Jonathan Flegg. Thank you.